a very interesting subject uh, I want to address and uh, this is not complicated for me I want to say this to you it's really not complicated for me addressing this subject uh, I can say that I have mixed emotions but I really can't say that with a surety that I have mixed emotions because it's not the first time uh, that this has been presented over the years but it's interesting to me that it's come to bear now uh, about the late great martial arts master Bruce Lee now um, it's been said uh, in recent weeks that Bruce Lee was a drug addict he was addicted to cocaine and various other things. He even smoked uh, hash or marijuana on a regular basis. Okay. I've never heard of a student of his. I've never heard of a family member of his ever, ever mentioning Bruce Lee utilizing any types of drugs. Now, we're talking about 50 years ago when this young man at the time died. In that span of 50 years, never heard anything about it. Now, over the past few years, I've heard people say that, you know, he did drugs. No, no longer than two or three years I've heard this. So my question is, why now? Yes, why now? Why is it coming up now? Now, from what I gather, there was a student slash friend of his named Bob Baker. Bob Baker played the Russian fighter in Chinese Connection. Some called Fist of Fury, two names at the time let's just say Chinese Connection. He was the guy he fought outside of the building, the, the house. So, Bob Baker, uh, according to what I read and heard uh, on YouTube, was a very close friend of Bruce Lee. And they say that he was Bruce Lee's drug supplier for many years. And Bruce Lee was addicted to drugs. And uh, they showed uh, on YouTube, from what I saw, some letters uh, in Bruce Lee's personal, uh, not his archive, but in Bob Baker's letters and Bob Baker's daughter Allegedly, after Bob Baker had died, of course, uh, she was auctioning, apparently, off some things or going through some personal belongings of her father and or one or the other or together. As she was going through some personal things of her father, she was going to auction or auctioned off some things. And these letters came to bear between Bob Baker and Bruce Lee, where Bruce Lee was asking him for drugs. And Bob was allegedly responding back and forth to him in several letters and they even said that there was a letter or two of Linda Lee Bruce Lee's wife at the time uh, seeing how or asking how were they going to ship certain drugs to Bruce Lee now I kind of scathed through that but here's the thing do we really know and people have said that those letters look legitimate. They were time stamped. They looked as though it was Bruce Lee's actual signature and so forth. This is me. I don't care. I don't. And I believe that people who have loved, adored, respected, and followed Bruce Lee, who's still living today, don't care. First of all, the man is gone. The man is dead. Now this could be 
any other celebrity who has gone through similar situations or who has been the topic of this particular subject over the years. We could talk about Elvis, we could talk about David Carradine, we could talk about Jimi Hendrix, we could talk about a whole lot of people. But it just so happens that this is this has surfaced about Bruce Lee. Now, fifty years about this man has been dead. How he impacted the world as a human being is unprecedented. Phenomenal man. So now, all of this that he has done for the martial arts world, and even outside of that, we bring up some allegations that he was a drug addict. Can you say defamation or an attempt to defame the man now? It's not going to happen. No. He's too entrenched in American culture. He is. It doesn't make me see Bruce Lee any different. It does not. Because Bruce Lee is the reason many, many hundreds of thousands and even millions of martial artists across the world started to become martial artists. He's the reason. So to say that all of a sudden this so-called scandal and we don't know if it's legitimate the letters and, or not even if they are this is going to disturb everyone's life who has benefited from him? Oh no, I don't think so. His legacy still lives on untainted that's the way I see it so I don't care how many letters you have how many boxes how many archives of things between him and Bob Baker or anyone else for that matter you may discover we ain't buying it I'm not buying it brother teacher it's not buying it I don't get it at all so you can take that with you. Bruce Lee is still my mentor. Now, I can say it's wrong to do drugs if he did. And it's unfortunate that he did. Let me give you an example. If it did happen, let's say it did. And we have to look back at the 60s and the 70s to understand this too. In China, opium is really prevalent. It's popular in China. So it wouldn't be out of the ordinary if he did. They smoke hash and whatever, cannabis. It's common in the Orient, right? Or in Asia. Some Asians don't like the word Orient. But anyway, it's common. It's commonplace. China is one of the the most notorious places for smokers in China. About a billion people there. A lot of people in China smoke. That's common. So if Bruce Lee did hash, if he did cannabis or what we call weed or marijuana or he did even cocaine, look at the end product. Look at what he became. Who knows the amount of stress he was under carrying such a burden of his success. You know, if it happened, it happened. But it didn't change and doesn't change who he is and how he impacted the martial arts world and the world in general. It just does not. So, those letters that supposedly surfaced they can auction them off, burn them. I haven't heard Linda Lee or Shannon Lee or any of Bruce Lee's remaining students, Dan and Masano, anyone mention anything about it, and I hope they don't. It's over. It's done. Yesterday was the anniversary of Bruce Lee's death. I acknowledge that in the video. I still love the man to death for his accomplishments and how he has benefited me as a martial artist and I can speak for myself 
Now, if you're a karateka, a judoka, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, or a kung fu man, or whatever discipline you study, thank Bruce Lee, because if it were not for Bruce Lee, the little dragon, none of us would be doing what we're doing in the martial arts today. And that includes the MMA. That was it. And that was all. I'm not interested in any more papers that he wrote between this person and that person back to him and so forth about drugs. It doesn't mean anything to me. And I hope it doesn't to you either. As it relates to the man that we all know as John Van, Lee Saloon, Bruce Lee. He lives on.